what's going on to youtube eddie here welcome back to my channel i do appreciate it and by now you guys should already know that i used to work for a car dealership well not soon after i posted that video i decided you know what let me give you guys a little insight into perspective of a car salesman and i actually compiled a couple of questions people have had asked me and i figured you know what let's make this a uh, video a little bit you know with a twist and uh and more interesting by answering those questions so uh if you if this is the type of video that you guys kind of like if you have not done so already please give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you have not done so but if you have any issues questions or concerns please leave them in the comments below so let's begin so the very first question i have is uh which i thought was a funny one is why the hell do car salesmen call about a thousand times well uh i tell you there's one thing i would tell you and, and by the way um even though this is in the perspective of a car salesman this is my perspective when i was a car salesman i can't answer for every car salesman but um I guess I could get kind of close uh, to the uh, to the rhymes and reasons why we do certain things. And and in this case, the reason why we do call a million times or it seems that way is because there's one thing, at least I could say that I didn't like doing um, and that was making those cold calls. Listen, if you don't like receiving them, trust and believe we don't like making them. And, um, but it was, that's part of the gig. It's part of the job. Uh, it's part of our responsibilities and duties, um, to really get our brand out, um, and, uh, help customers, hopefully, you know, lower interest rates and, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. And to just really get them in the door. Right. Because uh, if you ever pass through, you know, pass by a dealership, uh, you notice it's it's not really a line coming out the dealership, right? Not like any type of brick and mortar where, you know, people will just come in to window shop and leave, right? Uh, very, very rare would you actually see a customer in a, at a dealership unless they are ready to buy. And by the time they get to the dealership, trust me, 85% of their buying decision has already been done at home. They just want to see if they kind of like the car, the way it drives, and so on, right? And see if that you're going to give them a good deal or not. But um, but the call call is really trying to get them in the door. So we kind of like not, try to knock them out as fast as possible, right? It's a numbers game, and we kind of want to knock them out. At my dealership, we were, um, it's basically, if we didn't get 50 calls in a day, uh, and maybe, I think, um five two or five appointments a day um you know we can't go on the door right and we rather i know i did rather go on the door so that we have a better chance and luck to talk to someone in person right uh, i love talking to people in person I, I love conversing with them even if they don't buy nothing i just kind of love having that dialogue right it, you know being on the phone is not really authentic any or well, at least anymore i guess it used to be but um you know nobody wants to be bothered at work or, you know or at home and we always call at the wrong times um, that's because we just really want to get it out the way right and then you get upset and you know how that kind of goes so um so but if we are off the phone and we wait for a customer um then basically you know we could kind of like start that sales process right so i kind of hope uh that kind of understands or maybe even soften the blow to why we call a million times it's part of the gig um it's trust me it's not something that we saw out to do or why we get into this business um but it is a requirement unfortunately and um sorry <laughs> so uh do we have to give up our social security and i don't know why that's really much of a question but or nor to understand where that is stemming from unless you're doing a credit checks and obviously right but what i'm assuming is uh when a salesperson is sitting down with a uh a customer or client you know, uh, we're just trying to gather information uh, when we use what's called a guest list. And basically what that does, it just narrows down a customer's search, right? Um, you know, because we have, 
you know, 200, 300 vehicles on a lot at any given moment. So we kind of want to narrow down that customer search, you know, their needs and their wants, right? Um, and also bring customers down to reality a little bit because remember about 85 percent of their you know buying decision has been made already on, at home they probably already built the vehicle at home and all that stuff and and they probably see the price oh you know 350 dollars a month perfect you know that, that that goes with my budget and all that stuff but i'm there now talking and and kind of like you know peeling back the onion a little bit as they say and kind of like you know, bring customers down to reality because maybe, you know, they think when they did it, when, when they built the vehicle online that they don't have to uh, put money down or maybe they think that the credit is as good as they think it is and things like that, right? So I'm I'm the bearer of bad news, basically, right? So um, we kind of want to like narrow down the search. So we do a guest list, right? And a guest list is going to say, hey, listen, do you have a car that you want to trade in? Maybe that could happen uh, and help, uh, you know, bring down your, your, your monthly payment down, right? Um, are you putting any money down, right? Um, you know, uh, what's your credit like? Things like that, right? Um, so in that scenario, no, you do not have to give your social security, you know, um, in fact, uh, there's a lot of information on there that you really don't need, you know, most of the, most of the information there is just required so that they could put you or input you into our system. Everybody gets put into a system one way or another. You go to a supermarket and they give you one of those cards, right? They're putting you into a system. So we're no different, right? So, um, so, but otherwise, no, you don't have to, um, that process doesn't, happen really until we kind of like um search to, you know the perfect vehicle for you now i will say this you know um we can be a hundred percent on the vehicle we want to put you in uh until we really do credit uh, credit check right um you could tell me your credit is 650 um so i'm basing you know all the information um uh, you know, I'm, I'm basing I'm basing the vehicle that I'm thinking that I should get and put you in, so we could test drive, off of the information you are giving me, if that makes sense, right? So uh, understand that you're gonna fall in love on this vehicle, and then you know, and 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 fall in love with the monthly payments and all that stuff until we run credit, which then I'm gonna need your social security at that point, and then all of a sudden you're gonna be hit with the realization that. You know, everything that basically said to you is not going to come off as I'm a liar because, you know, we didn't run credit. And that could be shame on me in that scenario, right? Um, because I didn't, you know, I didn't like say, hey, we really should, you know, or I didn't emphasize that we really should run credit. Um, but, you know, sometimes customers just doesn't want to run the credit or whatever the case may be, or sometimes maybe be even insulting to them. I don't know, whatever the reasons are. But uh, understand that as long as you can understand um, that, you know, everything's predicated on your credit, the down payment, your trade value, all these things, right? Um, a, a, a good estimate is that for every $10,000, you're deducting about $200 off of a payment, right? So anything anything counts, right? Down payment counts, your, your trade-in value counts, all that stuff. So if you want to be at a certain value, you know, for every $10,000 that is given, brings down, you know, uh, your payment of uh, down to six uh, to $200 a month. So if a payment is $600, right and you know you only have five thousand dollars right you're probably only bringing it down a hundred dollars a month right so uh then unless your car is worth five thousand then that's two hundred dollars taken off of that six hundred now you're down to four hundred dollars a month hope that kind of makes sense a little bit hope that answers that question as well how do we make money well um, we make money if we sell a car. Uh, the dealerships makes money if we sell a car. The general manager makes money if we sell a car. The finance guy makes money if we sell a car. So I hope that answers that question. We sell a, we sell a car, we make money, period, right? Um, 
Now, no two dealerships are going to be the exact same on how they do that. Um, some actually just gets paid hourly, uh, believe it or not. Uh, some just gets a set rate, right? Um, you know, whatever the vehicle, whatever the car that they sell, just they just get like two hundred dollars for that car. Period. No matter what, no matter no matter you know the trim level, no matter how expensive it is, it's two hundred dollars a car, whatever it is, right? I, uh, on the other hand, got paid off a of gross. I hated that, and all that means was that um, that. Uh, whatever the dealership bought the vehicle at to what we sold it at, um, I got paid thirty percent off that gross, which in hindsight is really good money. Um, unfortunately, though, you have to really kind of like uh, raise the price, and you'd be surprised how many people actually did that while I was there, right? Um, you know, the, the sticker price is there on the vehicle, right? And, you know, it's it's black and white. However, you'd be surprised how many people don't even look at that. And you'd be even more surprised to know that uh, a lot of salespersons make sure, you know, that that customer doesn't look at that uh, that sales menu, really, right? So, um, and, you know, I think I mentioned in one of my videos that, um, unfortunately, one of the guys actually raised the price up because he knew he had the money. Okay, sounds sleazy. I get it. All right, it is what it is. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the price is there. And that customer agreed to that price because he had the money. Now, off that one vehicle, that salesperson made over $10,000 off of that one vehicle. You know, so, uh, you know, there's some sort of, I believe, a responsibility in the uh, consumer side, right? The customer side, right? Um, if you are happy with that price, you know, then I think that salesperson did its job. I don't think it's really his job to worry so much about your pockets, if that makes sense. Now, you know, if you can't afford it, Okay, then you're in too much car. Then then it's the other way around, right? So, you know, if your budget, if you're an old person, you know, that's retired, that just need another vehicle to go go around, yeah, we're gonna understand that. We're gonna put you and you know, point point you towards a vehicle that you should be in. You know, maybe even a certified pre-owned vehicle, right? That might have still like a year or two left on the on, on its warranty, but you know, the but the payments are gonna be relatively affordable, right? Uh you know, no one, no car dealership, no car salesman is going to be that sleazy and put that person in a vehicle that they, they can't afford. Now, it's happened, you know, um, but if you could afford a $1,000 a month payment on a vehicle, then you, then there you go. You, you got a $1,000 a month payment on a vehicle. You know, I don't think that's really the salesperson's responsibility. Uh, my opinion to know whether or not uh, if you can afford this or not, right? Based on the information you're given, based on your credit score, based on based on your trade in, based on your down payment, based on your job, um, and you're a grown person and you agree to the numbers, then that's it, right? Um, so uh, so that guy made a really good commission check on that. Kudos to him. Um, so, uh, you know, one person mentioned to me one time, he's like, this is not a job, uh, if you're too nice, you know, because you're worrying about too much of that person's pockets and, you know, and that's why I'm no longer working there because I'm sentimental that way. But, uh, but to those people, Hey, listen, um, that's how it is. And that's how they got paid. Uh, and it is what it is. So I hope that answered that question. And, um, uh, how can a customer save money? Now, uh, there is ways that customers can save money, okay? Um, you know, obviously there's sales, right? Um, there's sales where people even wait at the end of the year. You know, sometimes they even wait at the end of the month so you can save the most money. And some dealerships have, you know, um, you know, discounts, you know, for a veteran, you know, military uh, if, if you're in public service, you know, teacher, what have you, um, you know, but I did find a, another way for a person to actually save money without actually, without, uh, without actually waiting, uh, for a sale or at the end of the year or at the end of the month and you still got a good deal. And that's, uh, I mentioned earlier in the video that, 
you know, it's pretty much a ghost town at a car dealership. And I remember working there uh, about a few weeks before Labor Day weekend. And we was going to run big sales, right? And uh, it was like two weeks, so, uh, two weeks before that. So it was like right like mid-August, right? And, um, and it was a ghost town, right? We all, you know, nobody was coming in, right? So we sat sitting there and basically making those... <sighs> those crazy you know those wonderful um uh, cold calls right and that no one li likes to make anyway so um you know managers will just say hey listen get them in the building um presence is power by the way just letting you know you have to come into the building can't do everything over the phone but presence is power uh, but if we have if the dealership have not sold a car all day and it's like four o'clock in the evening and you know the you know no one walked into the building no one sold the car i'm telling you right now the leverage is all on you you have all the leverage all the power you probably and i've seen this done actually about two weeks before labor day someone actually got a better deal if they had waited on labor day itself for sale so there's definitely ways um so if you're in the market for a car and want the best deal you could go in there and make sure like no one sold the car you know, and you can negotiate and, um, you know, and but just so you know, like to my dealership to go back to how we got paid uh, because in my dealership, we got paid off gross. Like, you know, we deduct the payment off that car to work the other way. So I lost money just so that you could get a car. Right. So so I got a unit out, but I made no money off of that because, you know, there was no gross on on the sticker that that you bought it at. Right. If I got paid off gross and we sold it to you basically off how, you know, we broke even, you know, we sold it at what we bought it at, what we bought it for, then I made no money. I made a unit. It is what it is, but that's sales. Right. So in hopes that, you know, I treated you well, I treated you nice and you and in referrals. Right. And then maybe in a few years you come on back and you remember my name and hopefully we get to do this all over again. So that's basically it. So um, that was the only uh, main major questions that I saw that I really wanted to come on here and kind of address. Uh, but if you guys have any more questions in regards to uh, car sales, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely introduce that. Uh, but listen, car sales was a unique experience, say the, le uh, say the least. Um, I I'm kind of glad I did it. So I kind of understand uh, what goes on behind the scenes. Um, not the best decision I made career wise. Um, but hey, listen, things happen for a reason. And I have a found new, ex uh, you know, respect uh, for car sales. Um, but I will definitely not do that ever again. But you know what? Um, it's great information. Um, it's great tidbits that I kind of learned along the way that I don't mind actually even sharing with you guys. So again, if you have any questions, issues, or concerns, please write them down in the comments below. Again, share or like this video and subscribe if you not have done so already. But until next time, guys, this was fun. Let me know if you have any other questions. Take care.